All right, so now we're going to be talking about the quadratic roots and solutions. So this is very important vocabulary. Please, um, vocab, vocab, holy mackerel, vocabulary. This is very important vocabulary. Your roots equals is the same thing as your solutions which is the same thing as your zeros, which is the same thing as x-intercept. And this is all the same thing as when your, these are all synonyms. You need to know those. This is where the um, parabola touches the x axis and the important thing to know is that when this happens your y is equal to zero your y is equal to zero okay so when i'm looking here if i'm looking at a parabola so here quadratic roots is basically those three words roots are also called solutions zeros and x-intercept now we talked about with linear when we have one solution for linear let's kind of just go back when I have one solution for linear that's where lines cross at one point all right somewhere if I have no solutions this is one solution no solution would look where the lines are parallel and infinite solutions look like it is the same line so you've got one line and then you've got another line right on top of that line okay they're the same line we've gone over that in class that's something you guys are familiar with now we're talking about parabolas so if i were to have two solutions for a parabola the parabola may look like this and the reason why it may look like that is because it's crossing the x-axis twice do you see that crosses x-axis tw twice all right it may also look like this Because that's, oh, that's the same exact thing. Or it may look like this. Let's see. Um, it may look like this. Those are three parabolas that cross the x-axis twice. One here, one there. All right. Now, if we have one solution, it's going to cross the x-axis once. So this is where your vertex is on your x-axis. Okay, so that might look like this. My vertex is on the x-axis, or if it's a positive, it's going to maybe look something like that. Okay. Those only cross the x-axis once. So then if we have no solution, it will never cross the x-axis. All right, and what might that look like? Well, that might look like this. Now notice it, is, it can cross the y-axis. It just cannot cross the x-axis. We have no problem if it crosses the y-axis. That's okay. It just cannot cross this x-axis. That's the important one when we're talking about solutions. All right? So if I was to graph this equation right here, if I were to take my calculator 
and plug in um, plug in this equation x squared plus 4x minus 5 I'm going to see that there are my solutions or my x-axis or my graphs and I can go to my table and then when I go to my table to find roots look for y equal to 0 and I'm going to see 1 is right here there's my y equals 0 where x is at 1 y 0 and the other is going to be where x is negative 5 1 2 3 4 5 and I can kind of look and see my vertex is right here where it starts to repeat so it goes negative 5 I'm looking at the y value now negative 5 negative 8 negative 9 negative 8 negative 5 so right here at negative 2 negative 9 would be my vertex and I can graph that okay and fill in my table accordingly. So I would suggest that when you write your table, you put your vertex in the middle, and that if it's something big like that, you can go ahead and put your, um, oops, you can, oh, I hate it when it does that, your, um, oh my goodness, your zeros in, and this is gonna be negative five, zero and then I would highlight those I would circle or highlight anytime you have a zero in the y column that's important all right hope that helps